Again, seems like it'll be a quick transition getting Aaron Boone in there. Does sound quick take that there are going to be some roster changes coming. Looks like there's going to be roster changes. He didn't get specific about it, but obviously he knows the roster have to change because if you're going to bring back the manager and you fire the coaches and, you know, the, the uh, general partner said in July that the players have to play better and they didn't play well enough, there has to be player changes, and we just have to guess along with them what those changes will be. Talked about a more flexible roster for Aaron Boone, more athleticism, more contact. Those were issues that plagued the Yankees all season. So now in the offseason, as they evaluate and look back, those are some areas of attention. He said he definitely needs a shortstop, so we know Gleyber Torres is not returning to shortstop. I thought he said positive things about Gary Sanchez. I think if you're reading the tea leaves, it seemed like they still believe in Gary Sanchez, but Michael's right. We'll have to see the rest of the offseason and how it unfolds. And he also had a lot of good things. Every time they mentioned some of the problems the Yankees had, and, you know, he talked about a solution, and the solution was always Rizzo. He kept coming back to Rizzo, uh, which would lead you to believe that they would want Rizzo back at the right price, which was what we've always thought. Also, at the beginning that I thought stood out, and we kind of uh, thought about this uh, even before we heard from Brian, you know, why three years and an option uh, for Aaron Boone? Well, he, he came out and said, we believe he'd be the number one free agent in the managerial market if he was free. And, you know, there happens to be a job open across town. The last thing they'd want is for Aaron Boone to, to maybe go and manage the Mets. Obviously, the, uh, you know, a lot of people have reported that the Padres would have interest in well as well. That's why he gets a three-year deal. And as you pointed out, why go to Boone 2.0 when you have Aaron Boone sitting right in front of you? There's a comfort level. Whether the fan base agrees with its decision or not, there's a comfort level between Brian Cashman, Aaron Boone, and the rest of the organization, just as there's a comfort level between Hal Steinbrenner and Brian Cashman. So, again, at the top of the show, Michael's right. We talked about it. Barring an organizational philosophy change, you would just be hiring another manager who you wanted to emulate what Boone has done done take that buffet table of information that cashman talked about sift through it and make the decisions that inside the room that they're thinking about making before the game ever happens and boone is the conduit to making those decisions i think that they are all in on brian and all in on his staff and the analytics and it just would make sense i guess to them why you bring in another manager again it wouldn't be a manager like you know, a Mike Socia or a Buck Showalter because that doesn't jive with what they're running, the, you know, the collaborative effort where those type of managers, all-time managers, they are the boss. They're, they're going to make all of the decisions. So, you know, why would you go to a lesser guy? You have four years already invested in Boone. The thing that struck me, though, that I think a lot of people will jump on, you know, he, he's still a work in progress. He, he still says he's very good. But he's a work in progress. So you're going to go with a work in progress for another three years. At this point, the Yankees want to win a World Series, and you're admitting that the manager is still a work in progress, although you believe that he's very good right now. I thought that that was a, a kind of a money quote there. I